Hello everybody, welcome to lecture 4 in this module on critical thinking. In the last lecture I told you, the lecture 4 will be devoted to a tool you can use for critical thinking, a tool which I call mind mapping. Mind mapping is a concept which very closely follows the working of the brain. Mind mapping follows basically the process of what is called radiant thinking. Now, radiant thinking works something like that. Have you seen a pebble being thrown into a pond? It falls at one place and the ripples start moving from the middle outside, from the center to the boundaries. Now, it works something like this probably. Yeah, you keep moving from here from one point to the other. This is an image of radiant thinking which was made by one of the thinkers. Now, this is the way we start thinking from the center outwards. It is called the process of radiant thinking. Yeah. Now, have you ever seen the neural structure of the brain? How does it look? If you look at it, you might compare it to a cobweb. You might say it looks like a cluster which has been just put together. This cluster never goes in straight lines. This cluster never operates from the left to the right or the right to the left. It does not go from the top to the bottom either. So many people say that this whole process of reading which we have devised, this whole process of writing which we have devised for ourselves, writing from the left to the right or the right to the left, from top to the bottom on a white page, writing in the, blank, uh, the black ink is a process which basically can make the brain go to sleep. Now, what do these people say about the neural connection of the brain? I will show you a picture of how the brain looks. Do you see it here? This is a very basic, a very basic picture of the neural structure of the brain. Now, this bulging, roundish kind of a place over here can be called the cell nucleus and here you have the thought impulse or the electromagnetic impulse gets fired in this nucleus and subsequently it travels along these lines. It travels along these lines which are called dendrites. Okay. As you see the dendrites are not straight. They move, these are feather like structures, tree like structures and the thought impulse, the electromagnetic impulse keeps moving from one dendrite to the other. Significant over here is the fact that the dendrites can join, they can move either in, in, in any direction which the brain wants like the, a thought impulse can move in this direction and go in here or it can even go in another direction, move in from here and take a different trajectory altogether. Now, what is it that happens? A closer look at this kind of a structure will tell us that these dendrites are connected by what are called the synaptic button. They are not linked with one another. They are not stuck to one another. There is a tiny gap through which the electromagnetic impulse jumps from one to the other. If you look at this also closely, you will find that they are not linked with one another. Can you see the gap over here in between the two dendrites? The electrochemical impulse probably comes from somewhere here, travels along the dendrite, comes to this point and takes a jump from here to here and moves along this way. At every point in time, every second, thousands of nerve impulses get fired in this cell nucleus and they start traveling from inside to outside. Now, a significant fact over here is, if you notice clearly, none of these are in a straight line. So, in a mind map, we find that a thought 
or an electrochemical impulse moves from neuron to neuron through the synaptic process. Every neuron gets messages from thousands of neurons and passes on thousands of messages in turn almost simultaneously. Now, significantly the path along which the impulse travels also gets something, it is something the brain gets used to. There is a resistance along every path. So, if you are thinking a thought very frequently, the path also gets cleared. So, automatically the thought keeps moving in a certain direction because the electromagnetic resistance along that path is the least. So, if you want to alter your process of thinking, you want to think differently, you want to drastically change you feel or you think about something, you have to deliberately think differently. It is not easy to think so. It is not easy to change the direction in which the electromagnetic resistance is there. Not to, it, it, it's easy to flow in the direction where the ele electromagnetic resistance has already become less. But to think a new thought, one has to break the habit, one has to break the pattern, one has to create new kinds of electromagnetic paths which one can think about, which one can travel in. Mind mapping is a concept which was for the first time talked about by a psychologist and an educational consultant called Tony Buzan. According to him, a mind map is a brilliant way to organize thoughts and recall and analyze information creatively. He says, a mind map can basically be used as a graphic technique, a wonderful graphic technique of representing ideas on any topic. It can be used to gather existing ideas, it can be used to connect existing ideas, it can be used to understand complicated systems and finally, it can be used to create new ideas. Now, we will very briefly see why it becomes such a convenient process, such a convenient method of working. First of all, it works along with the brain. It works the way the brain works. It works in lines which are not straight. It works through colors. It works, moves in a way which moves, which allows us to move from association to association. Now, association making is another very important factor, another very important principle which operates in the functioning of the brain. And a mind map allows us to make associations freely and not have to structure it at every point. Now, a mind map is like following the brain's usual normal way of functioning, natural way of functioning because it imitates the process of radiant thinking. It moves from center outside. It moves through the process of, it works through the process of association making. It works better through images, through pictures. Have you heard the saying? A picture is worth a thousand words. The moment you show a picture, you are crystallizing, channelizing, bringing in a lot more than just words can do. And a mind map allows us to think through pictures, peg the thoughts to pictures and see where it can move from that point. And this enables us to make connection, make relations, make associations which can become very important for generating insights while making a mind map or while thinking a new thought. Now again finally, a mind map moves along lines that the brain is used to make associations. It generally follows the path of least electromagnetic resistance. This is what we have been talking about. but for innovative thinking, for what is called lateral thinking, one has to break this path of least electromagnetic resistance and move on to new ways of thinking and functioning. Now, can we do a mind map today? Let us see how we can do it. The best way to do it is start with a main idea. I will be moving from one slide to the other from here. Probably, I will draw it for you over here. Uh, but before we draw it, I would request you all to go to this link and listen to the talk of the talk is available on YouTube, a talk by Tony Buzan on how a mind map can be done and how it can be interestingly done. 
I will be drawing a lot from his talk and I'll briefly be trying to see how we can create a mind map on paper. Now, to make a mind map, the most important thing is have a, play, a piece of paper, a piece of plain paper placed not in the portrait manner, not in the portrait pattern, but the landscape pattern. We need space to move laterally. So, put the image in the middle, put a picture, put the basic idea you have in the form of a picture and from inside always move outside. It is better if you can make the lines thicker and then thinner, thicker and then thinner. I am not able to do that correctly over here. See how the brain, how the lines can move from inside, move outside and then create your sub points. This is very important if you are trying to make the main points and the important points the most rudimentary thing in a reading passage. You have the main idea of the reading passage in the center. Even as you are reading, you start putting the main, the main points along these lines. And even, even as you come across the sub points, you start putting the sub points along these lines over here like this. Tony Buzan will tell you, it is very important for you to put one thought along every line. Every line should be pegged to one thought only because that thought will help you branch out into many other thoughts. And gradually, the most important thing is you can even make associations freely. Suppose you find this idea is in some ways related to the idea over here connect it. You are free to connect it the way you want. Connect this idea with this idea. Probably you have one more nucleus over here and from where again you can move out in branches and sub branches. Creating new thoughts, creating new associations, creating new images probably. Look at this now. Start with the main idea, create images wherever possible, branch out to sub ideas. The ideas here move from the center to the fringes. That is what we have done, remember? We kept moving from the center to the fringes. Here, every idea leads to a spray of associations. We have seen that also. And each of this again becomes a source of another spray of associated ideas. Tony Buzan also says, worked along curved lines. Ideally, have one word as a peg in every line. Finally, he also says, work with different colors. The brain works better with colors. Have you heard about the right and the left side of the brain? If the right side is primarily responsible for logical thought, the left side is responsible for creative thought. If the right side works with words better, the left side would work with pictures, associations better, colors better. Try simple thing. You are, you, you are feeling bored, you do not want to study, you find it difficult to concentrate. Pick up a bunch of color papers, pick up a bunch of color pens and start working out, start doing a mind map of whatever you are reading. Immediately you will feel your brain becoming, coming live, giving you more ideas, taking you to new associations, bringing in more thoughts which you never thought was possible before. Try it, simple technique, it might help you a lot. Now, look at this picture of the mind map. A picture which I have taken again. Some basic principles of mind mapping are present over here. Keep moving. Do not stop. Keep drawing empty lines whenever you do not find ideas. It is very important to keep empty lines because sometimes if there is a pattern in which there are empty slots, the brain itself tries to complete those empty slots. Heard of something called the gestalt? Now, it is again important when you are making a mind map not to judge because you might think an, an, an idea is not important, but whenever an idea comes to your mind, it is important for you to put it down, pen it, keep it. You might discard it later, does not matter, but do not judge on the spot. Put every idea that comes into your mind on the paper. Make few associations, add branches, add categories, make subcategories. 
think fast, try to capture the explosion of ideas. You know how fast the brain thinks? And sometimes the way of writing from right to left or left to right does not allow us to catch the burst of ideas which come from time to time in our brain. Now a mind map is a very convenient way, a very effective tool to capture these bursts of ideas. So let the mind map capture your ideas, make the associations, lead you from one to the other. Later you can decide how much of it you want and how much of it you do not want. In mind mapping, one very important factor is relatedness. Critical thinking is majorly relating data around and this can best be done with the help of a mind map. It can help you perceive relationships, it can help you create connectedness, it can also finally lead you to critical thinking. It can help you figure changing relationships, it can help you figure new patterns and finally get make new associations, forge better associations and finally make new ideas. Tony Buzan says mind maps are the meta language of the human race. So start mind mapping today, see how best you can organize your ideas, bring your ideas together with the help of a mind map. I am sure you will enjoy doing it. Look at this picture. Do you think Einstein did not succeed in what he was doing because he chose to work in straight lines? Maybe he would have been able to do that, you know. Second cousin, so would that make my second cousin once removed the great aunt of my first cousin, twice removed? No, wait it, can't be right. Only an Indian mind can solve this kind of a complex theory. And that also, we might solve it better if we can make association making through mind mapping and probably that is why he thought relativity was easier than doing that kind of an association. I have a small assignment for you after this. The assignment is there on your screen. Imagine a system that would help mute people convey messages to people around who cannot understand the sign language. Can you put this in the form of a mind map? Probably. I would like you to come on to the forum with a rough mind map, make it, take a scan copy of it put it, let us see how you people do it, maybe I can give you some feedback, you can follow some of the principles which are already there in this slide and we can discuss this for further in the forum. Thank you, I hope all of you start doing a, make a mind map, make mind mapping a habit of reading or thinking, thank you.